One of the most common types of DDoS attacks is the UDP-based amplified reflection attack. I will now explain how this attack works and what makes it so hard to protect against it. The most targeted system is web servers. Any systems attached to internet can be a victim of a DDoS attack, and this attack works just as well on all types of systems. But for this video, let's assume that the victim is the web server. The system is connected to internet via a local internet connection with a bandwidth of, let's say, 200 megabits per second. There is a firewall filtering and inspecting all traffic between the web server and internet. It has a capacity of 500 megabits per second. The internal network has a capacity of 1 gigabit per second, and the web server itself can handle 100 megabits per second. The entire system is sized for maximum 100 megabits per second of traffic, which means that the weakest link of the chain, the web server, has a capacity of 100 megabit. If there would ever be a demand for more traffic, the web server would be upgraded to handle more traffic and the bottleneck would instead be the internet connection of 200 megabits per second. This upgrade race could continue forever upgrading the weakest point of the traffic flow to keep up with the demands of bandwidth and performance. When it comes to UDP-based attacks, however, the traffic flow normally stops and terminates in the firewall. This means that the capacity of the parts behind the firewall is irrelevant, and in this case the weakest link is the 200 megabits per second internet link. If the link or the firewall is exhausted, it will start dropping packets. The result of this is transmissions and eventually outage of services. The web page will become slow or unresponsive. So, if the weakest link is 200 megabits per second, all it takes to do a denial of service attack is to generate more than 200 megabits per second of traffic. If Evil Bob, who have the intention to attack the web server, has more than 200 megabits of bandwidth at home, he could in theory create the attack all by himself. However, doing that will most probably draw attention to him from his ISP when generating that mass massive amount of traffic. Instead of generating this traffic directly to the victim web server, he generates traffic to reflectors. The reflectors are servers on the internet that has no intentions to be part of any DOS attack. To be able to do a reflective DOS attack, the attacker uses UDP, which is stateless. He sends traffic to the reflector using the victim web server as source address for the traffic, which makes the reflectors believe that the traffic came from the web server and the reflector will send replies back to the web server. If the attacker used TCP packets, which are stateful, the packet from the attacker would be a SYN packet and the response from the reflector to the victim would be a SYN ACK packet, which has no payload and is rather small. By using any kind of stateless UDP packets where the query, the first packet, is small and the response, in this case sent from the reflector to the victim, is bigger, the attack would be amplified. If the amplification factor was 1 to 10, the attacker could generate 20 megabits of UDP queries to the reflectors and the responses from the reflectors to the victim would be 10 times bigger, 200 megabits per second. This is called an amplified attack. There are different types of UDP-based protocols used in amplification attacks today. The most common types uses DNS or NTP servers. In both cases, proper configured DNS and NTP servers does not answer to these types of queries. But there are many not properly configured DNS and NTP servers on the internet, which can be used as reflectors for these attacks. To further strengthen these attacks, the attacker does not send the UDP packets himself to the reflectors. Instead, he uses botnets for this. A botnet is a number of malware-infected computers spread over the world that the botnet controller can use for various purposes. Your or mine virus-infected computer can be part of this botnet. If the infected computer does not do anything active, it is called a zombie. It is often a background process running in the computer invisible, for you and me, just waiting for the commands from the command and control server managing the botnet. In the DDoS scenario, the botnet command server is called a stressor or booter, delivering DDoS attacks as a service on the internet. Anyone with a credit card can pay a few dollars to the person in charge of the stressor, and this will deliver, deliver a DDoS attack against the target of choice. So. 
In a typical DDoS attack, Evil Bob is just a person wanting to take down a service on the internet. He visits a web page delivering stressor services. He enters his credit card number and points out the address to the target he wants to take down and depending on how much he pays, the stressor will deliver an attack at a certain bandwidth and time. The more money, the more traffic is sent and for a longer period. A normal price can be 30 minutes of attack at a rate of 1.5 gigabit per second at a cost of 15 US dollars. The stressors will send commands to the botnet and the botnet members send UDP packets to the reflectors with spoofed source addresses. The reflectors send their amplified responses to the target. The challenge with mitigating these attacks on site is that you need to have enough bandwidth and resources to handle the incoming attacks. Today, many attacks are in the amplitude of one or several gigabits per second, so upgrading the internet connection and firewall to handle this amount of traffic would protect the internal resources from being exhausted. But the price that comes with handling all this traffic is in most cases unrealistic high. And the only thing left to do is to filter and block this traffic before it reaches the weakest link of the chain. Most major ISPs can today handle this traffic and filtering the DDoS attack within your ISP premises is often the only option left if they can deliver this service and if the price for this service is reasonable. There are a few long-term solutions to DDoS attacks. First of all, Botnets are being used as a tool to scale up DDoS attacks. Working with eliminating botnets and malwares will reduce the impact of DDoS attacks. Second, unpatched servers being used as reflectors should be upgraded and properly configured. When using DNS service as amplifying reflectors, the attacker takes advantage of the fact that the server is configured as an open resolver. In most cases, the DDNS servers should not be configured like this, and proper configuration of the servers would make them less attractive as amplifying reflectors. Third, in my opinion, the most powerful counterfeit of DDoS attacks would be if ISPs around the world would implement Unicast Reverse Path Forwarding, also known as URPF. This is also called uh, source filtering. When an ISP that has customers that are part of botnets that is being used in DDoS attacks, these clients send spoofs packets. This is being allowed by each local ISP since they do not verify the source address of the traffic coming from their customers. The ISP knows that traffic sourced from their customer would have certain specific ranges of addresses in their source field of IP packets. Today, most ISPs does not implement the URPF which makes source address spoofing easy to use. DDoS attacks are, in my opinion, the biggest and most severe threat to today's internet. And there is no silver bullet that protects us. And as long as anyone with a credit card and $25 can buy an attack, we will see these attacks. My name is Jimmy Larson. Please visit my blog at netzero.net. See you!